Welcome back. So in this lecture, we are going to learn how to create catalog sales ads. Now I'm super excited for this one because this is an unusual lecture because we are going to learn unusually much while doing unusually little. Because we did preparation work in the previous lecture, we have access to a whole host of different functions. Now, if you are on e-commerce, this is going to open a whole new world of features for your ads. Let's dive in. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on create here and then we are going to move on to campaign objective and change that to catalog sales. Now you'll notice that now we have a catalog. Fantastic, right? So this is going to be the catalog that we created. We can go in there. We can create multiple catalogs depending on if we want to, you know, uh, maybe we have multiple websites or we have multiple niches etc. But we're going to use this collective catalog that we created. So I'm going to go down and click on save to draft and then we can get started. So campaign already set up, nothing we need to do. We're going to move on to the ad set. The ad set is where the magic happens. So scrolling down, we're going to do this bit by bit. First up, we have the product set. Now, remember, we took all products, but if you have a Shopify store, for example, or some other e-commerce store, doesn't matter where it is, and you have different niches, well, then you can create different product sets. Or if you're selling different types of product, you can create different product sets. Now, we just imported them all into one product set, so we're going to use all of them. Scrolling down, we can set the budget as usual, and this is pretty cool from Facebook, I think. You've set a daily budget that is significantly greater than the average on this account. So we get a warning. That's great. But the hilarious part is that I didn't set this one. Facebook did, right? Doesn't matter. We're still just going to go through the new features here because we already know how all of this works. Now, when we go down to audience, this is where the magic happens. So we have two different things we can do. We can retarget ads to people who interact with your products on and off Facebook or we can find prospective customers even if they haven't interacted with your business. We're gonna start with this one because this is just a fancy way of saying, hey, we're gonna set up this ad as usual. It's just that now we're going to display your products the way we want to and to the people that we believe are most likely to be interested in certain products, all right? So we're gonna start off by understanding this one. So this is just setting up your ad pretty much like usual. So we already know custom audiences, locations, the age detail targeting, we've done this before, right? The only thing we can change here is that if we go down to show more options, we have exclusions such as exclude people who purchased all products in the last 10 days. No exclusions or create a custom exclusion, right? We do not need to play around with that. Now going down, what is also interesting, of course, is your optimization and delivery. Now optimization is right now at link clicks. We don't want it to be link clicks. We want to go to conversion events and then we want to put this at purchase. Now if you remember from our conversion ads lecture that there is no excuse and no reason to not use the purchase event type, right? Because in Facebook, what you choose is what you get. They have so much data. They have such great machine learning. Now, we, there is a reason not to trust Facebook, but when it comes to choosing your events, they are going to optimize for what you want. Because again, if you get good results, you spend more. If you spend more, Facebook makes more money. This is a win-win situation. So there's no excuse not to use conversion events and then purchase, all right? So once this is all set up, we go to the ad design level. Now in here, this is where it gets pretty cool, right? Because the ad setup includes dynamic formats and creative. Now, what, what is that? Here it says, when you use a catalog, deliver the format and ad creative most likely to resonate with the person viewing your ad. Now, normally we've spoken about collecting our own data, right? We don't want Facebook to aggregate all of the data so we don't know what, what is doing what. But when it comes to dynamic Facebook ads, I strongly recommend that use the dynamic formats and creative for your products here because you need to treat this as its own ad, right? The only information you're going to get is how these products and how these product sets are performing. If they're performing well, that's great. You won't be able to read the data from it. That's true to, to a certain extent, but this is a great way to get some great results. So this is the only time where I'm going to recommend using the dynamic formats and creative. So what is going to happen here, as we can see in the preview, is that you're going to get a bunch of different carousels. Some are going to be in video format, some are going to be single image, some are going to be slideshows. They are going to create the format and the product and based all of those features 
on who the audience is, who the actual person is. Now they have so much data on every single one that's using Facebook so they know that this person resonates with slideshows or this person resonates with, I don't know, carousel ads and this person is interested in this type of product. It's almost scary how much information they have but that is the reason why dynamic formats and creative is so effective, especially when we're using it for our e-commerce ads. So I strongly recommend that this is the only place where you use it and treat this as your own type of ad, all right? Scrolling down, there's nothing we need to do. We can use our creative tools. We can exert control here, but there's no need to do that, right? The only thing that we really need to do is write a primary text, Write a headline. Now the first headline is going to be the product. You can see that here already. So don't play around with that one. And then write a description. Now you're going to notice that you also have the ability to add in a name, brand, retailer, description, price, a bunch of different information here. Because remember, we're using dynamic ads now. So if you write in a price here, well, the price is going to be different depending on the product. So that's where you can use these short codes to add in a price. Uh, by, let's say, for example, that you would write, uh, now at only and then you click on this plus and then you add in price and then you're gonna see that the primary text is going to be based on the product that it is showing right so right now it's $15.99 because it's the boho and leaves earrings now I recommend that you do this at the description level instead because the primary text is going to if it's a carousel contain all of the ads so that's not gonna work very well with the price specifically but it's gonna work very well in the description because those are on the ads individually so what you can also do is that you can add in uh, another option in here and other options mean multiple descriptions and the reason for that is because there's gonna be a lot of multiple ads with multiple descriptions, they are going to find which one works the most and use that one. So you can give them more alternatives uh, that way. We add in the website URL as always. Scrolling down, there's nothing we need to play around with there other than making sure that we nail the call to action, right? We probably want to keep it at shop now. So those are dynamic ads that you can create. Now, going back, we're going to be looking at the retargeting, right? Now, this is very exciting because retargeting, as we've spoken about before, or remarketing means that people who interacted with your product can be shown the same product again, or it can be shown other products that are going to be similar because we already know their intention, right? The same way that if you're looking at different travel trips and you don't purchase that travel trip, you're gonna see those trips and uh, price offers everywhere, right? They are going to be retargeting and remarketing to you. So scrolling down, we're gonna click on retarget ads. Now this is pretty crazy because we get a lot of options and all of these are gonna take care of themselves, right? We just have to decide. First we have to retarget people who viewed or added to cart but not purchased in the last 14 days. Now remember, we're using this product set, we could use another one. Added to cart but not purchased. We can also upsell products. Upselling products means that we sold something and now we want to sell something even more expensive. Of course, now if, if we're going to upsell product, we're going to want to have where to view the products from and then have something to actually upsell them from. But upselling in its nature means you're going to sell something more expensive, right? So that means that in order to sell something more expensive, we need to click on this plus here and then add another set. And this other set is going to be where the upsell happens. Now we don't have that and we're not gonna play around with that right now, but it's very easy to do. You're just adding the product or product set. Then we can cross sell. Cross sell just means that you sold something and then you wanna sell something additional, right? Doesn't mean that it has to be more expensive. Very same thing here, you select where they purchased the product from and then you add in what you want to actually cross sell. And then finally, you can create a custom combination. And a custom combination means that you can select your product set, like we've done before, we're gonna go with our products, and then you decide on what you want to be included and not included. So let's say, for example, you want to target the people who interacted with all products by viewing them, right? So let's say that they viewed them, we're gonna click on add inclusion, they added to cart, but they did not purchase, right? They did view within the last 14 days, they added to cart, within the last 10 days, but they didn't purchase in these last 10 days. So those would be the people that we are targeting. Now, for most of the time, you're probably going to be targeting add to cart, but not purchase. Those have the highest conversion rate. But of course, if you don't have that many people, viewed or added to cart, but not purchase is a great option. 
So scrolling down, there's nothing more we need to worry about. We already understand conversion events and purchase. And then if we go to the ad design once again, we know that this is going to be dynamic uh, formats and creative. There's nothing that we need to play around with. Everything is already set up. Just add in that website URL, add in the primary text, headline, we don't need to touch description, and then just hit publish and you're good to go. So this is how you do catalog sales ads. Super powerful. Just remember, do the proper setup like we did in the previous lecture, then you can create these type of ads. And remember, because you're using dynamic formats, you want to keep an eye on this one specifically. You're not gonna get the same data, but treat this as its own ad and read the information from there. All right, see you in the next lecture.